welcome to ESO Weekly here on the Shoutycast channel. I am Kyle, and with me, as always, I'm sure y'all know what I'm going to say, my dear darling brother Josh. Do you feel that, Kyle? Mm. There's been a disturbance in the floor. Something, yes. something is different. I, I think it's like that NDA agreement that was once, you know, sitting on our shoulders, pushing us down, telling yeah. us, no, you can't say shit that you want to say has finally been lifted and I feel free. I can breathe. Oh my gosh. There's so much I want to tell you, so much, ladies and gentlemen. But we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> we are 43 days from launch of ESO. I guess it's a little less than that if you count early access. We're already in the 30s. So, awesome. All right, so before we go into the Ask Us Anything article, we wanted to mention a site we have stumbled uh, across. I think we've even mentioned it before. Yeah, we've mentioned it on the show before, but it was uh, pre-beta. It was before really anything was on this site. Yeah, anyways, it's called uh, adoringfan.com, and it's almost like a wiki and a database in one because, like, you can contribute stuff to it by submitting your, your uh, images and stuff like that, but also it has, like, all of, well, they're adding it constantly, but all these items, and it has like skills, all the skills are listed there. So if like, if you're new to you, so you haven't played the beta yet or anything, but you want to get kind of like a heads up on the stuff you can expect to see in the game, like item wise and skill wise, this is a website you want to go to and check out. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you're in the beta too, I think you can contribute to this site. Um, it's just going to be one massive database. Everything that there is to know about the Elder Scrolls Online will be on this site. So great site to check out too if you haven't had the opportunity to play the beta yet. Just because you can uh, take a look at the items and skills and stuff. I want to search Sweet Roll, but I guess I'll do that later. <laughs> All right. Um, today we are, before going into our impressions and, you know, basically saying whatever the hell we want to say, uh, we'll be going into this Ask Us Anything Variety Pack 13, uh, most of which has to deal with the early access stuff, the Imperial bonus, the pre-order stuff. So let's just get through some of these, because I know a lot of people have been asking questions in regards to a lot of these topics. Like, for one, how many character, uh, character slots are we going to end up having? I know before they only had four, like during some of the beta tests. Now they can finally say that. Uh, there was just four, uh, but they moved it up to eight, and uh, apparently they are going to stick with that because there will be eight character slots per account. Yeah. Um, the more the merrier, definitely. Yeah. I think four was enough for me just because there's four classes, right? Once you make four classes, I mean, what more are you going to do? But again, it's always great to have more of something. The more the merrier, yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing we wanted to talk about is this whole, those Rings of Mara things. Um, and like how exactly will those work? So apparently, um, only one person needs to have that Imperial Edition to get what they call, or to do what they call the Ritual of Mara. Which apparently has to deal with this thing called a Pledge of Mara. Which I don't even know what this thing is, but apparently it's equipable. You go to a Shrine of Mara with another character. You then use that Pledge of Mara onto a person, and then you both get these two rings or whatever, which you can then use to get more experience when you're questing with that person or just grouping up with them doing whatever, you'll get an experience boost. Uh, but apparently they said that, you know, only one person needs to have that Imperial Edition, and apparently this experience gain stacks, so we're kind of wondering, well, what if you get three people into the mix? What if me, Josh, and another person, another, a friend of ours, a mutual friend, want to quest together, can I put the rings on me and Josh? So now we each have a ring. Josh puts a ring on the our friend, our mutual friend. So then now Josh has two rings and this other guy has a ring. And then he does the ritual with me. And now we all have two rings each. Yeah, we have some crazy threesome going yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> two rings each going on. Because um, apparently this you know experience gain does stack. Are they gonna like let this happen? I mean, that seems like a huge like I'll, I'll tell you what overpowered thing. I'm gonna pretty much hold my tongue on the Imperial Edition and all that and the, the morals of it. I mean, I, I don't want to beat the dead horse or anything like that. But let's just take it on a, a fundamental level of what it is. Uh, the recruiter friend program has been done before. It was done for World of Warcraft. I had participated with it there. Um, but as far as, uh, yeah, it, this experience gain, if indeed it is allowed to stack and you're able to get, because as we have been told, the Ring of Mara is quote-unquote granting you a significant 
level boost. So you're going to be burning through levels really fast, especially if you have those two things stacked. Now, my question to Zenimax would be, do you really have faith that you have that much content that if people are able to burn through all of it, they'll still be, you know, they'll still have enough stuff to do with the end game. And I don't know, Zenimax must have a massive amount of faith in just how much content there is at end game. Because as we know, even without any experience bonuses, MMO players, MMO veterans, burn through content like you have never seen. And for anyone who hasn't participated in, in, in an MMO before, it is incredible to see how, how fast these guys will burn through just dozens of hours of content in no time at all. I mean, just get ready. Within the first week, we'll see tons and tons of people already at level cap. Now, that's going to happen even faster as yeah. a result of these Rings of Mara, and let's just hope that the freaking endgame is able to keep those people because I can easily see those people burning through content like, like you've never believed. <laughs> All right, so let's go into the whole uh, bonuses and stuff and when those will actually apply. The Explorer's Pack, which is the thing you get when you pre-order any version of the game, um, the stuff in that will unlock at 4414. That that being those those treasure maps, I think it was, and the the pet, wh whichever mini pet yeah. came with that. Those won't unlock until 4414, but the the any race any alliance thing will be active during the early access i mean it has to be yeah. it has to be for those people who want to play like a dark elf in the almary dominion or what have you that has to be unlocked the day they get into the game for early access because they're not going to want to wait to create their characters to right. the game launches as a matter of fact i don't even know why they're holding these bonuses back until the launch the official launch on 4 4 14. makes no sense to me they didn't really give any reasons for it why withhold these bonuses for just a couple of days? It doesn't seem like these bonuses are going to make a difference. I really know. I don't know. It's just what they agreed upon, apparently. Um, if you did purchase it through the ESO store, though, there's no further action you need. But if you pre-ordered it from a third-party store, <clears throat> um, you have to put in some like activation code that you apparently got with your pre-order, which you then go to your account with the ESO store to activate. And then you get that early access stuff. So make sure you got some kind of code or something to make sure you did get that early access. Did you know I have even pre-ordered the game yet? I haven't even done that You still yet. got time. So I still have, I know, fine. plenty of time. But when I do, I'm definitely going to just go straight to the source. I'm going to buy it from, you know, the yeah, website. Yeah. It just seems like it makes the most sense. Why have it's a middleman there, you know? And, Though, I mean, you can get, I guess the only reason you would is because you can get deals other places. Because I know you can get the Imperial Edition for the same price as a Standard Edition at some places. Yeah, they, yeah, like Green Man Gaming had a deal back when and Gog, stuff. And Gog, I think. I guess, yeah, that would be the only reason is to get some uh, special rewards and cash yeah. rewards or whatever. Um, something else they brought up was that guilds, you know, this is kind of obvious, but guilds will not be able to change their alliance affiliation once it's been uh, created. So make sure you did choose the right alliance for your guild. Um, AD. Uh, because, yeah, just, it wouldn't make sense in AVA for people to just change their affiliation willy-nilly. Um, I love that term, by the way. Willy-nilly? Willy-nilly. <laughs> love that term. <laughs> the Imperial Edition bonuses, uh, again... These will actually take effect during the early access. Access. If you purchased it from the ESO store, um, or you activated that early access code like we were talking about before. On the exception, though, apparently, is for those that pre ordered the physical edition, or the physical version of the Imperial Edition. Those people apparently will not be able to get that stuff, that Imperial Edition stuff, at the, uh, the early access part. Because the code is in the box, so you can't, you know, get it unless they ship it out, you know, five days before the game comes out, which could happen. I know, I know some games have done that. Like I've ordered games through Amazon, and I got the game, uh, like early, to be able to play the early access thing. So maybe they'll do that. I don't know. Um. Oh well. Okay. No one really cares, but Vanity Pets will be account wide. That's you know kind of obvious stuff. <laughs> there are people out there who that is their know. thing, man. Like, I, I mean, I used to have a friend in my guild that that <laughs> is what they did. They collected mini pets. It's weird. It's like, oh man, I don't know why that would appeal to you, but to each his own. Yeah. Um, as I've said before, and this is just confirming it, uh, the Imperial race will be able to you know inherently 
craft Imperial gear, and that's what they were saying in the whole like pre-order. They listed it as a bonus when it's not really a bonus. You're an Imperial, you can craft Imperial it's gear. It's such it's such a huge misconception. I think this has caused more confusion yeah. out there more than anything else. So can you spell it out for everyone exactly what this bonus quote unquote is? Sure. So like. You're an Argonian, you can inherently craft Argonian-style gear. And this yes. goes with all other races, you inherently can craft your racial-style gear. Um, so, and the Imperial race is no different, but they still, like, listed it as a bonus for the Imperial edition of the game. Yeah. Which was causing, you know, a bunch of hoo-ha or whatever even though everyone like even that argonian who knows how to craft argonian gear later on in the game can find uh is it a recipe book it's, is that what it is they're called motives but yes it's it's just a yeah. book you find it's a it's a recipe basically that enables you okay from now on i know how to craft imperial gear so everyone everyone is going to be able to unlock this if you want to eventually it's just that each race gets their cultural specific uh, crafting armor mm -hmm. right at the start of the game. They can inherently know how to craft their race's armor, which makes a whole lot of sense, obviously. Now, the cool thing about the Imperial Edition is that you are able to transform your gear. That means both armor and weapons, which I was hoping would be the case, to the Imperial style. And you can do this on any of your characters regardless of the race. So if I'm, you know, playing my wood elf and I want to wear the really cool looking, by the way, the cool looking imperial style gear, right. I can do that by transforming that gear into the imperial style. So I don't have to craft it into the imperial style if I don't have that book. If I find some piece of gear that I like the stats, but I don't like the way it looks, I will be allowed to transform it into the imperial style gear if I have the imperial edition of the game. And, um... But doing that will bound the piece of armor to your account, so you can't like make imperial style gear and sell it because yes. it's special. And that's the reason, right? That's the reason they did that because yes. of the whole economics of it all, you yeah. know. But I mean, it's definitely cool because you can do this at any time with any piece of gear you get. Um, so like, hell, that'd be the reason for me to buy the imperial edition if you like the gear, which I love the gear because it's got that, you know, that roman style oh, it, it kills look. me inside all Does throughout <laughs> all throughout high school my favorite subjects to learn in history was one the crusades because i was super into assassin's creed i aced that test in history <laughs> and then i've always loved the roman empire I, it's always fascinated me their whole their styles their armor styles their architecture everything that's why i love taking field trips to washington dc because you know right, they have all the right. stuff modeled after the roman empire i love love the imperial style and the fact that you know there's this whole pay gate thing going on with it where yes you have to get the imperial edition to be able to just suddenly transform your items into the imperial style yeah i i die a little inside because <laughs> i took the stance against that but you know that was that was my conviction and uh, I'm i'm sticking with it all right, well, that was it for the uh, Ask Us Anything. There were a couple other things, but, you know, who gives a shit? So let's go <laughs> on into our, you know, our impressions of the game now yes. that we can finally talk about it freely. Oh, gosh, this is what I've really been waiting to talk about because finally, I mean, how long... Now we can talk about exactly how long we've been in the beta. How long have we been in the beta? Since March, I think. Yeah. Around March, so yeah, it's been a long time. Almost a full year we've been in the beta. Now. And we've seen this game come a long way during that time. I remember the first beta I played of the Elder Scrolls Online mm -hmm. being very, very different from the Elder Scrolls Online that I'm playing today. The Elder Scrolls Online I was playing back then was just... It was doom and gloom for me. It was bad, but it was a beta. That's why I still held out hope for it. And uh, there was, there has been a lot of massive improvements since then. I think there could have been a lot more <laughs> improvements, but uh, we'll sure. go ahead and discuss that, uh, I guess, right now. So, The Elder Scrolls Online, Kyle. The Elder Scrolls Online. Has it fulfilled your expectations? What disappointments did you have with it? What surprises did you have with it? Just, I guess, uh, summarize uh, what this game is to you as a gamer. Just you individually sure. at launch. Let's say this. Uh, I think it's known that I am more of an MMO player than an Elder Scrolls player. I mean, I really enjoy the Elder Scrolls games. Don't get me wrong. But I've just I've enjoyed MMOs better. I guess because I kind of like that more on-rails experience. Um, not in the strict sense. I mean, I still like to explore, but I like 
there to be that path that I can go back on to should I feel lost or something. I can continue on that path. Elder Scrolls seems to be a very good hybrid. Elder Scrolls Online seems to be a very good hybrid of those two systems. You still, you can have that on Rails experience if you want because there are a lot of very long quest chains. There is that main story quest that will guide you from zone to zone. Um, but they still promote exploration to a point. Um, there are still plenty of things you can find off the beaten path, not just sky shards and stuff. I wish there was more of that. I wish there was more of that. Um, what are those style quests called? The, just find them out. Uh, I don't know what they're really at the term for it, but I see them as miscellaneous quests, the quests that find you, you know? You know, just those ones you find out in the wild. You weren't, like, looking for them. They just happened to show up. Right. Um, I actually just ran into one of those while I was recording some footage. I was just running across a bridge, and this person literally, like, teleported in. Like, a, a, a portal came up. They came out and gave me a quest and asked me to come jump in this portal with them and do stuff. Right, like a side distraction. Yeah, like I was just running to another quest to do another quest, and this showed up. I'm like, ooh, shiny, so I'm going to go do it. Right. Of course, a person comes and talks to me. And then this whole time while I was doing this quest, these different quests in the zone, someone was talking to me in my head. Like a voice was talking to me while I was doing stuff. I'm like, where is that coming from? Who's talking to me? What quest is like this supposed to go towards? Like any time I even killed a deer or something, it's like, it should have been you that died or something like that. I'm like, what? Is that her scene? That sounds like her scene. It might be. I don't know, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that's a dangerous. And this was just annoying. like a, a teen level zone, so it's not like way up in there. I mean, you you do start getting into that open feel fairly early in the game once you know you're out of those beginning areas we love so much <laughs> <laughs> so i just think it is a very good hybrid i think as an mmo player i really enjoy this game and as a somewhat strong elder scrolls fan i also enjoy the game because it is in that universe that i enjoy so now what do you did think? this change the mmo like formula enough for you like how many months after launch, and that is the real question for any MMO, right, and its longevity. I mean, I know it's beta right now, but you've gotten a pretty good taste of the end game. I mean, and we can say this <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, we can talk Ladies about Ladies and like gentlemen, Kyle has reached level cap in the beta. Well, sort of. I have reached level 50, and once you're at level 50, you become what is called a veteran, or veteran rank, and then you can go from veter veteran rank 1 to 10. Yeah. I think I'm veteran rank 2 now, so I'm still not max max, but... But you're level 50, I've, which... I've completed the main story, I Yes, say. and which and you're level 50, which, it, which is the maximum level, not the maximum veteran rank, but the maximum right. level in the game. So you've experienced a lot of it, you're at that end game more or less. Um, I know you don't really have that community feel probably with a guild right now or anything like that. Yeah, not that many people. But you've experienced many, many MMOs, you've beta tested, us together, we've beta tested MMOs in the past. How many months do you think you'll stick with this game, as opposed to other games like... How long did you spend with Star Wars Guild Republic after you reached level cap? Not and long how long did you spend with Guild Wars <laughs> 2 after you left level cap? And then tell me how long you plan with The Elder Scrolls Online. Okay, well... So Swator was a total failure for me. I mean, once I reached level cap, I realized there was like maybe two or three instances to do. And I just couldn't get people that even wanted to do them. And then for PvP, there was only a hut ball, because apparently that was the only one that they would ever put me into, even though there were other modes of PvP. I just hate, I lost interest in that game within right. maybe a week or two after reaching level Oh, wow. Cap. Okay, so that one only had weeks left of life. Yeah, it in was it. terrible. Uh, Guild Wars 2? What about Guild Wars 2? Pretty much the same situation. When they started saying that uh, the leveling experience is the end game, yeah, I was pretty much, you know, okay, this game's not going to have any longevity, uh, longevity at all for me. And it did ring true because all there was left to do was uh, farm dungeons, the same dungeons over and over again. And really people only wanted to do a certain one or two dungeons over and over again and that was it. And all the other dungeons were just empty. No one did them at, at all um, because apparently a few of them were very easy to farm. Right. Um, they did start releasing some stuff like fractals or whatever, but I just had no interest in that stuff. So yeah, again maybe a little longer maybe a month and that's only because i had 
somewhat of a guild in there. Right, right, which makes a big difference having yeah, a, just, a community of gamers. It wasn't enough. All right, and now for the big question, the Elder Scrolls Online. Now this is gonna be a hard answer for you. You have to take off those rosy tinted glasses. I know you're probably in a honeymoon phase right now, but standing back and being completely objective about it, how far past level 50 do you see playing the Elder Scrolls Online? And then, of course, you have to keep in mind there's a subscription fee, you're, you'll mm -hmm. be paying $15 a month for this game. How long do you see keeping that subscription after you hit level cap? Really hard to say at this point. It is, it really is. One, because the Adventure Zones have still yet to be seen, even in testing. They haven't even started testing them yet, so I have no clue how these are going to be able to be in the game at launch, even though uh, Fireroar has said that they would be in at launch. The PvP is awesome, like epically awesome like the best pvp experience yeah, like i've ever had in everyone has been saying yeah sieging keeps there's just so much yeah. stuff that you can do in that game which will keep you entertained even if you don't like pvp you're gonna like this i'm, I'm just saying you're going to but it's really hard to say i'm gonna say at least a few months i'm gonna give it after level cap so i'm saying probably a good six months six months i will put into this game at least that's pretty respectable yeah but it it's yeah it's still there's still stuff that needs to be seen and then plus with all the patches they say they're going to be coming out that's just more and more content for me that i want to return to do all right fair enough fair enough okay so there's kyle's evaluation and now we're uh shifting over to josh so so uh, feel free to tune out right now so josh <laughs> yes kyle yes you've been known to rant about certain things that yeah. Zoss, or not so much Zoss, but Zenimax Media Inc. has done uh, with the Elder Scrolls Online experience. That said, <laughs> would you say that you still enjoy, or have enjoyed, your ESO experience? I'll tell you what. I Do I enjoy it as an Elder Scrolls game? No. Do I enjoy it as an MMO? Yes. But more importantly, do I enjoy it as an RPG? Yes, I do. Okay, now let's go back in time because, and I feel like I'm going to be a little long-winded on this, but <laughs> bear with me because I feel like I have to establish my credibility here just as a reviewer because I think a lot of people see me as like maybe an Elder Scrolls purist. And Kyle, you've Nazi. known me as long, you started me on video games and you know that that is not true, that I don't have just this Elder Scrolls lens by itself. I've been playing MMOs. Let me ask you, when's the last time you played Skyrim? The last time I played Skyrim was probably a good four months ago. See, so he's not a total purist. No, I'm not <laughs> by any stretch, not by any stretch. I started MMOs way back when with RuneScape. I was Ooh. in elementary school playing what? with all my friends. 2004, 2005? Yes, there? yes. RuneScape was my first MMO and I loved it to death. I think I put maybe only more hours into World of Warcraft since RuneScape. That's just how much I lived and breathed that stuff. I think that's really what got me started as a gamer, believe it or not. Since then, I have played many, many MMOs. I think the last time I counted, it's over 15 MMOs. Everything from Warhammer Online to World of Warcraft to Rift Online to Age of Conan, Star Wars Galaxies, you name it, I've probably picked it up and played it at some point. Now, out of those 15 MMOs, I've maybe only reached a level cap in like four of them. But uh, yes, I I very, very much was have been to M into MMOs since I've been a gamer, really. Now, during that time, I've experienced what a lot of MMO gamers have experienced, which is this MMO fatigue, right? You can only play so many of these games until they just start looking like one another way too much. Um, Star Wars The Old Republic was announced, and I was looking so forward to them breaking this formula with their Bioware-style storytelling. You know, if you've ever played games like Mass Effect or uh, the Knights of the Old Republic games... Bioshock. Um, you'll know what these games feel like as far as the Star Wars The Old Republic, I still say to this day, had the best leveling experience I've ever experienced in an MMO because they, they did what they set out to do in that they wanted 
a story-driven MMO. And I have to say, a very, very solid writing, very, very solid story in Star Wars The Early Public. And that was the last time I played an MMO since World of Warcraft that I felt, oh, reinvigorated for a little while. Now, the end game, as Kyle already told you, was a different story. But <laughs> yes, there was this thing that held me long enough where I was like, this is something different. This is something I can get on board with as an MMO veteran and as a Bioware fan. Now, The Elder Scrolls Online has kind of become this rehash of that and what had happened there. Now, The Elder Scrolls Online is this game that's coming along, and when it was first announced, of course, I wasn't interested in, in it at all. I thought it was just going to be, you know, World of Warcraft with an Elder Scrolls skin. But the more we learned about it, the more we learned at how the developers were really trying to make it that Elder Scrolls game, the more I got interested in it, because since the days of Oblivion on the Xbox 360, I have been a super, super passionate Elder Scrolls fan. After MMOs, I started playing RPGs and I would not let go of them. I loved Oblivion, still haven't seen everything there is to see in that game, and still to this day will pick it up every now and then and play it. Same thing of course with Skyrim, another game that I feel will just never end. I wanted that formula, and more than anything, that exploration, that spontaneous adventure, to be injected into the MMO market with The Elder Scrolls Online. That's what I wanted from this game more than anything, is to have me and my friends who got me into The Elder Scrolls series to go into this MMO and experience something truly fresh for the first time and rediscover what it is to be an Elder Scrolls fan, what it is to be an MMO fan, and uh, let this game be something unique and different. Cure me of this freaking MMO fatigue that I've been feeling for so long. That said, <laughs> that said, let me take a breath here. <gasps> that said, what is The Elder Scrolls Online to me now, now that I'm able to freely actually talk about the beta and everything? I have to say, the first time I got into The Elder Scrolls Online beta, I was not enthused at all. As a matter of fact, I think I, I must have went through the stages of grief because I felt this sense of, like when I first got in, there was a sense of like despair. This does not feel like an Elder Scrolls game and this was in the early beta. The combat was fun and all that, but it, didn't, it just didn't feel all there. Now at the time I was doing ESO Weekly and I couldn't actually tell you guys about these experience I was experiencing in the game. The most I could do was go on the forums that, you know, The Elder Scrolls Online has a beta forums where you can leave feedback and the developers are all in there. They're talking to mm -hmm. the fans and they're taking feedback. And, and that's something I have to praise ZeniMax for. Even from the start when we were particip uh, participating in this beta, they were taking feedback and listening to all our concerns. And then not only that, but taking it obviously the step further and implementing these changes into the game. And being able to see The Elder Scrolls Online start where it was with the first beta I played and where it is now, it is drastically better. That said, The Elder Scrolls Online does fail, does fail as an Elder Scrolls title as the next installment in the Elder Scrolls series. And I know some of you are backing up, whoa, 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 this, this wasn't supposed to be the next installment in the Elder Scrolls series. No, but they absolutely market it as the next installment in the Elder Scrolls series. You can go to the pre-order page and it talks about how this is the next chapter. They've been pushing this as an Elder Scrolls experience that is brought online. It's Elder Scrolls, but online. And the fact that they market it as that, I think we can all agree that they should be held accountable to that. And uh, holding them in account to that right now, I have to say, no, The Elder Scrolls Online does not succeed as an Elder Scrolls title. And the single biggest reason for that, and I'm sure um, Kyle could back me up on this, although I know you haven't been that much into exploration in The Elder Scrolls. Again, you're more of a person that takes it from a very check off the list sort of approach. But the majority of Elder Scrolls gamers out there have loved spontaneous adventure. That's what Elder Scrolls games are for us. They're that feeling of doing that little starting tutorial, getting thrown into the big wide world and saying, have fun with it. Do whatever the hell you wanna do, go have fun. And that has always been Elder Scrolls for me, just simply existing in that world and exploring that world. 
The Elder Scrolls Online, and I said this back in the beta review video, but I didn't get enough time to elaborate on it. It does go out of its way, I feel. Or maybe not go, goes out of its way, but inherently, it punishes exploration. And by that I mean it bottlenecks you into zones. So, and we've talked about this on an episode of the SO Alliance. You could be in a level 5 to 15 zone, but you you have to pretty much stay in that zone and level up before you proceed to the next one. Now, you can go and run, like once you get past the starter islands, you can explore the world. I mean, it's open to you, but you'll get absolutely punished and murdered, and it will not be fun. Trust me, because I've tried it. If you run off and try to go to far off zones, just do that raw exploration thing, you will be punished, you will be bottlenecked, and you will be pushed back to those earlier zones to level up before you move on. Now, some people will say, and to a certain extent it's accurate, that this exploration just wasn't possible in an MMO. Like, you couldn't achieve that raw exploration in an MMO, and it was just one of those compromises that ZeniMax Online Studios had to make. And I have to absolutely disagree with that. I know ZeniMax Online had to make certain compromises for Elder Scrolls Online to be an MMO, but exploration, I firmly believe, is just not one of them. And the reason I know this is because the Mega Server has this technology that many, many MMOs are implementing today, and it works very well, and it's called the, you know, the Mega Server's phasing technology. And what phasing does is, for instance, Kyle and I can be in a zone together. I could be level 5 in that zone, Kyle could be level 25 in that zone. Now, we don't necessarily need to be in the same instance of that area. For instance, if I'm a level 5 in that zone, I can see level 5 to level 7 monsters. And Kyle as a level 25 in that zone could see level 25 through 27 monsters. I think that ZeniMax Online Studios should have made exploration much, much more of a priority, and they should have utilized their phasing technology to enable us to have that raw exploration, and I think a lot more Elder Scrolls fans would have been maintained and would have been excited about this game if that element would have been in there. It's just, it is an absolute keystone of the series, and it should have been in there. Now, I know PvP is really what they're pushing, and that's what is. Uh, Kyle's raising his hand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come oh, to you in a Jax. second. I'm gonna come to you in a second, Kyle. I know <laughs> PvP is what this game's backing, and it's, it's a big proponent of uh, PvP and everything. But as Kyle said, I think they had that down. They have it down packed. It's absolutely a fun experience. They needed to have had that keystone exploration in this game. And because of that, I just didn't experience it as an Elder Scrolls game should be experienced. Kyle. I honestly think, though, that leveling itself, leveling, using levels 1 through 50 or whatever, is so outdated that they should have just done away with it. I think yeah. Neverwinter, I think, is the game I'm thinking of that doesn't have levels at all. I think. It might. I don't think it's EverQuest next. Anyways. One of those games that I'm recalling right now doesn't even have levels. They still have a very good progression system. You still, you know, you're yeah, leveling right. your weapons, your skills and stuff. So you're still becoming more powerful. Um, but, like, it's not zoned out in levels. And that's, that doesn't mean, like, there isn't a progression of monsters getting stronger either. No, there's still areas you know there's going to be stronger monsters at, which is why you would go to those if you want that more... If you want to get that more experience by fighting, you know, the stronger monsters. Or just stick to the... The lesser monsters that you know aren't going to be terrible, but you can still do your questing and stuff. So why not do something like that instead of just levels? Right. That and way you wouldn't have to worry about... I mean, you would still have the phasing stuff, but you wouldn't have to worry about, you know, levels and all that other stuff that would get in the way. You know what, Kyle? You just nailed it, and that is exactly what I wanted to say. But I just didn't say it because it's such a radical idea for people. Oh, no levels. Where's my progression, right? It's it's this radical idea that we're like afraid of just because we're so used to and it's been so ingrained in us that, oh, levels, levels show our progression. No, no, really, level is an artificial number is what it is. And, it just yeah. represents all the skills you've gained. And, and Elder Scrolls Online almost seems like they were halfway there. They took half a step toward that direction with their skill lines. Yes. And the fact that that level's completely different from the whole levels and your attribute points. If they would have just, you know, gotten rid of the whole attribute points 
in the leveling system and just made it all skill lines, leveling your skills, maybe some other way to gain health and magicka and stuff like that. Instead of doing the levels, it would have been such a better game because they could have had yeah. a more emphasis on the exploration and done the game that way. Um, they're probably now like going, oh, screw that, that wouldn't have worked at all. But <laughs> honestly, in the back of their head, they're like, oh, shit, why didn't yeah, we do that? Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I know there's people listening to this and they're cringing right now because it is a <laughs> radical idea. But listen, listen. Any time a developer has come along with uh, a good idea or have imp have implemented something in the in a game that has revolutionized it and redefined a genre, it's it's been a radical idea. I mean, radical ideas are what games really evolve on and stuff. So before you're so quick to shrug an idea like this off, just remember that good developers are developers that take risks. You know, risks are good. They are, that's evolution is what it is. But um, yeah, anyway, I, I think that's all I wanted to say about it. Uh, please don't mistake what I'm saying here and uh, the criticisms as I'm no longer interested in this game. I absolutely am. And of course, Kyle is as well. But I'm very, very saddened to see, I, I think it could have been so much more. I think it could have been so, so much more. That said, it's going to be an absolute fun experience, and uh, I, I'm very, very much looking forward to playing it. That said, Kyle, would you say this MMO would be able to win over people who don't like MMOs? Or do you think it, it won't be able to do that? If anything, it'll be able to introduce new people to MMOs, maybe who haven't played MMOs? I think it's definitely a good introduction for people into MMOs because it's not using that whole, you know point and click thing and the spell I mean they still had that kind of homing thing in the game sort of um, but anyways it's it's just more of a natural visceral feel of a game yeah. in an MMO which is great because we don't see that well we're seeing it more often now I mean even with that terrible Terra game um, <laughs> oh geez here comes the hate but, but but it has you know had that more visceral feel in the combat yeah, action based combat yeah. so I think it's it has that hybrid feel to it, so it will be a good, at least, stepping stone for those that want to get into MMOs, but we're kind of fearful of yeah. MMOs because they are a huge thing to get into. They are a huge investment. If you've never experienced an MMO, my God, you you are missing out on a lot. And I think, Kyle, what you said is exactly right. I think this will be a perfect entrance. So if you're at all interested, uh, ESO is a must-buy title for you if you're interested into getting MMO into MMOs RP RPGs because if you're an RPG gamer, you're gonna be feel very very much at home with this game. That said, if you don't like MMOs, you've always hated MMOs. I don't think this game is going to change your mind. Anyway, oh yes, and get a guild, get a group. This this game is meant to be played with your friends. And of course, any game out there is more fun with friends, but it goes like triple for this game. It is a ton of fun to play with a good group, so make sure you have either friends that are going in in with you at launch, or find a guild. There's people out there recruiting. There's people right here in the donation section we're going to be reading off who are recruiting uh, for their guilds. I highly recommend getting involved with them now. Now is the time. Jeez. Oh, and I just want to mention, before we go into the donations... That we are now, I guess, unofficially slash officially, I don't even know what it is. We are al allied with Entropy Rising. That would be the Tamriel Foundry Guild. Yes. Um, which a lot of them are hardcore MMO players and PvP especially. So they're going to be a very good team to uh, be teamed up with. The Chalamo yes. never forgets. Uh, we really need to talk about that experience. Now that oh, we man. We'll do that next the, ESO. All I can say, tune in next ESO Weekly. And learn how the shoddy cast has been written, written within the <laughs> Elder Scrolls mythos. We are in the lore, officially. Yes, we are canon. All right, tune in next week to hear about how the shoddy cast <laughs> is canon Elder Scrolls lore. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Yeah, and we are also teamed up with uh, Guild Umbra. Yes, so Umbra. That's going to be a great trinity right there of, of guilds. I mean, we are very much a social guild, but we're going to have tons of PvP players in there. Um, we're gonna have like a whole PvP section basically with an officer dedicated just to PvP. So it's gonna be there We're gonna be out and about in Cyrodiil, but then with these two amazing guilds as well 
We're yeah, gonna be like, a force to be reckoned with. Guys who know what the hell they're doing, <laughs> which is going to make a massive difference. I mean, if there's any guild who's gonna kick ass in PvP, it's gonna be Umbra and Tamriel Foundry's uh, Entropy, Rising. Entropy Rising guild. Absolutely. Those guys, my god, those are the guys with the spreadsheets. Those <laughs> are the guys who take no prisoners, and it's going to be a blast playing with them. The PvP in this game is to die for. To, literally it, it is literally to die for and i'm not exaggerating when i say this it is really really great Alrighty, well we do have two weeks worth of donations to get through oh, and Jesus. as much as we love you guys and your money we have to burn through these really quickly just as a sake of time so all right let's get into it uh dale honaker james brown peter Gruber, Grober, Gr Grober, uh, however you pronounce your name, thank you. Uh, Miroslav Hronik, Nicholas LeMay, <gasps> Sterling Jennings. Malakath. Sterling Jennings is back. I'm so happy to see you, man. Uh, Joshua Honeycutt, who may be an officer. Uh, Beal McGruber. McGruber. <laughs> Jim Westgard. Uh, William Markert. Mar Markert. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Ryan. Charles Cottrell, Cynthia Darini, Martin Hirschner, Dragonborn, <laughs> Keneal Knighton, uh, John James Brown, Carrie Carlton, William S. Ekstrom, uh, Isaac Esposito, and now into those with messages. Uh, Thomas Green says, Josh, we recently watched your video regarding the collector's edition reward and agree. In fact, my girlfriend and I had decided that the extra money we would have spent would be best served supporting the Shardy cast instead. Keep it up, Shadow Hide You. Oh man, that warms my heart. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Philip Rodriguez says, Hello fellow adventurers, I am Dazen, leader of the PC Guild Forge of Honor. We are a Daggerfall Covenant Guild of close-knit broad... Cha brochachos <laughs> and dudettes uh, looking to have fun in ESO. We will be making big parties and raid dungeons and stuff, stuff, stuff. Uh, we can, <laughs> you can find us at uh, forgeofhonor.engine.com. I extend bromance to you guys at the Shoddy Cast. And without further ado, for King and Covenant, uh, Joshua J. Dilbeck says, Thanks for the great videos. Looking forward to crushing those who stand against the true rulers of Tamriel. For the queen! Damn straight. Uh, Ewan Lewis, uh, dear Shadikas, I invite you to a picnic on the field of Cyrano. Please bring top <laughs> secret Alberry Dominion battle plans and or sweet rolls. I think he's going to set us up to kill us. Yeah, I smell a trap. Uh, Marquis Maddox. Dragonborn. <laughs> <laughs> says, hello and thank you for all the information over the last year. It has kept me and my girlfriend entertained every week. I will thank you again for getting her to buy the game for me. Less fighting me. Uh, and more fighting the Old Mary Dominion. Here are a few more septums to bury your queen after we are done. For King and Covenant. Blasphemy. Uh, Albert Lamont says, Hey guys, Crew Blood here just saying hello. Uh, okay, before I start with the question I want to say, I am very fixated on all things vampires. Uh, now you know. Okay, now for my question. Being a vampire, you must drink blood. How will this work in game? I don't think that players will be caught sleeping out in Nern, will they? Uh, also, I have a vampire book that will be coming out uh, over on fanfiction.net. Look for the book name A Legend in the Decay. Well, thank you for all you guys have that something for the queen. For the queen. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about vampires. They haven't released information on that because they're kind of keeping that secret, so we don't know, I'm sorry to say. Uh, Alan Martin says, the name's Teddy Martin. Oh, hello, Teddy Martin. Says, I'm a Daedra-worshipping wood elf of the Dominion, and all I have to say is for here scene and... For the Queen! P.S. I think Josh is completely right about the pre-order in Imperial Pack exclusives. Again, this is like from two weeks ago, so that's why they're talking about this stuff now. For Joshua! <laughs> Timothy Ellis! RK! He returns. He says, Hey, fellas, RK's back dropping some bad septums all up on this battlefield. <laughs> Anyways, respect to Josh for the WTF video. Imperial noobs got a target painted on them. I will enjoy frustrating them with my utility sork. As Tyrone the Red God would say, Welcome to Nern, or Earth. That's a, a <laughs> Independence Day reference. Uh, good luck to Kyle with wearing himself down reading these 
other exuberant promo <laughs> messages. Give the guy a break, you goons. Yeah. Mark Dixon. Hermaeus Mora. Nice yawn there. <laughs> uh, hey guys, I'm donating twice. I forgot to write a message first time. I'm glad to... I'm glad to be back, and more septums will be coming your way. Keep up the great work, and as always... For the Queen! Uh, Ethan Francis says, Hosdara has taken... Oh, wait. Hus do your Khajiit voice. You read it. Oh, I can't see it from here. <laughs> Just give it your best shot. Hasdara No. Hasdara <laughs> has taken it upon himself to ask the queen if she might be willing to forgive any crimes committed by members of the exiled legion on the condition that they would serve faithfully in the majesty's army. This one told the epic history of the legion and the queen's advisors persuaded the queen. She agreed that if we fought in her name on the front lines and in enemy territory, she would restore to the members of the legion their armor, or, wow, their armor, their freedom and honor. This one humbly requests that you consider joining our noble cause. For the queen. Uh, For the queen. All play style guild. Exiled legion, not guild launch dot com. Getting all these guilds for you guys to join. Uh, be Black, or Be Rye, as I like to call them. Be Black, you have been traveling down a long and lonesome road. Off in the distance, you hear the Greybeards. They call you to High Hrothgar. You will no longer toil through this mortal life. No, henceforth, you will be known as Dovahkiin, Dragonborn. Cool. Perry Roberts, or uh, Andrew Lightfoot, I guess is his in-game name, says, The days when the Aldmer ruled over Tamriel with an iron fist are gone. The almighty elder, elder folk are all but gone. The days when mankind were subservient to a higher being are gone. The lesser races of Tamriel have ruled since the days of St. Alessia. Uh, it will man... It will man, not elf. It was... It were, it was, man, not elf, who <laughs> will fix the state of Tamriel. Our High King Emmerich is the next true emperor and will take his place on the ruby throne. Uh, death to the queen and down with a pact for king and covenant. Stephen Fish. Dragonborn. <laughs> Long time no see, shoddy gets. Uh, I was out furthering our Aldmeri cause, handing out pro-Dominion uh, pamphlets outside Solitude <laughs> in support of our fair Queen Aaron. Uh, some smelly Nord guard came and arrested me. Had a limp and a bandaged knee. Kept whining about getting shot by arrows or something, bloody Nords. Uh, but I have returned. P.S. Upon returning to my home in the Somerset Isles, uh, the town spoke, spoke of my new Dragonborn status. So cheers for that, guys, and remember, we shall have Dominion. Oh, wait, that's you. <laughs> oh, for Queen and Provenance. Province. Province! <laughs> uh, Alex Sotello. Dragonborn! Uh, hey, guys, it's been a while since I donated, but since, uh, but still been watching every week in Elder Scrolls lore series. Uh, as, uh, as always, awesome work between us. I've never played any of the Fallout series, so haven't gotten it into it. Sorry. Uh, anyways, just saying thanks as always. James Butler, from the halls of Lord Wenchmore. <laughs> you like that name? I guess. Wenchmore? <laughs> Wenchmore. Uh, please take this bag of septums with my thanks on a bloody good job as a fan who can count their time in Tamriel in decades. Your lore series is incredible. It has given me ideas for a backstory of my character for ESO. Called Draken Corn Orundil? Uh, I never would have thought of. Uh, thanks again and victory to the pact! Huzzah! Dustin Enoch. Kind of like that last name. Enoch! Uh, hey, greetings from Iowa! Keep up the good work! Talos be with you! Who's this Talos person? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. He's at least a couple centuries off, right? right? Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, in living labs, I think this is a company name. Uh, hey, Shoddycast, I'm just getting started setting up uh, cooperative dot e or I M, which is the home for cooperative 
Oh, the cooperative is the name of it, I guess? A casual ESO guild whose only focus is having fun and making new friends to play with who share the same interests. We're going to be playing on the Aldmeri Dominion on the EU server. Uh, we'll also have a Mumble server ready for launch too. Uh, so if you're a casual player who just wants to enjoy the game, make some new friends, and play a mixture of PvP and PvE in the Aldmeri Dominion, come and sign up. Oh, and for the queen! Stephanie Jones. Hello, Shoddy. I was wondering what do you think of the Osmer and Argonian racials? Uh, after Tamriel Foundry released the racials, I found them troubling. Osmer have consistently been one of the slowest races in tests, while the Argonians have been the fastest. Why are they flipped? Uh, this bothers the test player in me in a single race with a sprint speed. Uh, uh, also? Or included, I guess. Bothers the MMO player in me. Some may say Berserk will explain this, but it has never bolstered speed. Please tell me that I am the- I'm not the only one, I guess. Or that I am, whatever. Uh, thanks for all the entertainment. Also, my girlfriend thanks you for the subtitles on the lore videos. She is deaf. For the deaf queen! <laughs> wow. Well, you're welcome for the subtitles. Yes, very welcome. Uh, Argonians do have increased to swimming speed, 50%. They're the only one, so technically they're, they're fastest in water. So oh, that makes sense. There you go. As to why orcs have an increased running speed and no one else does, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> that's really weird. And I didn't know that till now. So yeah. Odd. Um, so that's kind of stupid. But I guess I had to give it to someone. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gave it to red guards. No, I'm not racist. So, well, hey, no, they actually have had better <laughs> athletics, so that would make sense. <laughs> Moving on before I start, you know, getting called a racist. A uh, Spencer Schlack. Says people are entitled to their own opinions. There is a clear competitive or competition taking place within the game to please two crowds. Some people will learn, lean farther on one side that favors the MMO, and some people will lean further on the side that wishes to preserve what makes test games so wonderful. It clearly seems that the channel is torn apart by this feud of traits. I personally think. There shouldn't be an MMO with the Elder Scrolls series involved, but it's too late for that now. There are wonderful qualities of the game. I think it's great, but not for an Elder Scrolls game. I support their opinions. This is in regards to your WTF thing, I guess, and all that jazz. Yeah. So he's kind of on your side. He doesn't think it should be an Elder Scrolls game, but it, <clears throat> it's a good game as it is. It's just it shouldn't be an Elder Scrolls it game. Is, it is a pickle. It's a pickle. Yes. And he also says we're entitled to our opinion, so those in the comments should just shut the hell up. <laughs> that was in there. I just had to remove some of that stuff because it was a long ass uh, message. Yes. What but, was the, what was the limit for messages again? Oh, like a tweet or a text message is like 144 characters. Yeah, but I can't. We have not I, been I can't to limit it. it. God. Like on the actual, you know, donations, I can't limit the message. Mm. Anyways, if you would like to. Donate to the Shardicast. Go over to the website, shardicast.com. You'll see a donation button on the right-hand side of the screen. If you donate $10 or more, you can leave, please, a short, short, no more please. than one 44-character long message for us to butcher through as we did today. I'm done. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all septums go directly back into improving existing shows on the Shardicast, as well as uh, new shows that haven't even been announced yet. So, yes, it does not go into our pockets. Anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning into this episode of ESO Weekly. You have reached the end of this episode. I'm so sorry, but we'll be back next Wednesday for another one, and we'll do this thing all over again. Don't forget to like this video and share it with everyone you know. I have been Josh. And I'm Kyle. We'll catch you later. Bye.